And the bottom one, the worst one, is unfortunately our industry, the construction industry, where productivity barely went up and there were some periods uh, which actually went down. And uh, if you know another version of these graphs, you may have seen it. If you go further up, upstream, until the 60s, it, it's more or less the same. It's, it's barely improving our productivity. So this is definitely something that shows that, that something needs to be changed. There is another graph which is called the digitalization index. So this, this shows in the horizontal, um, in the horizontal uh, column, uh, Graph. There is the productivity growth, which, which I just showed you. In the vertical one, this is the level of digitalization of the industry, percentage-wise, from 0 to 100. And of course, information technology, digitalization is almost total, and productivity growth almost like that is very high. If you go down, uh, you can see fairly a parallel uh, between the level of digitalization and the improvement in the Productivity. And again, the very bottom in this red dot is us, construction industry. So you can see that how much digitalization is connected with, with the productivity growth. This is, this is very clear. So, of course, digitalization is not only BIM, but I, I'm very confident that BIM is the backbone of the digitalization. If we have a BIM model, then we can talk about digitalization. If you don't have a big model, these are just scattered drawings and data, nothing keeps it together. So BIM is the key for this. And here is uh, another interesting data. This is coming from England, which is uh, in the forefront of the industry. And every year, the NBS, National BIM uh, Society, uh, asks the uh, partners in the, in the companies in the country that how much the what are the most important questions what what they think is the most critical for the industry and overwhelmingly it should this shows that that collaboration is the key word those who can collaborate those who can effectively collaborate will be those who cannot collaborate will be definitely not among the victims this, this is again the third data I wanted to share with you. Why is collaboration so critical? So, back 100 years ago, the industry was much simpler. You had to just build walls and columns and beams, and, and the, the building was ready. Nowadays, the buildings are increasingly complex uh, things, and you know, it's not only enough to build them, but you have different disciplines working together. You need structure engineers, you need uh, quantity survivors, interior architects, civil engineers, and every year yet another uh, profession is added practically to this, this mix. And all these people have to collaborate and work together smoothly in order to, to get the buildings done. And of course, if they don't work together smoothly, then that's the point where the productivity is, is getting lost. This is, this is why we are not there where the other industries. So, this is the critical part. Uh, these buildings, I don't know in Chinese, but in, in English they are called silos. Uh, you know, some agriculture productive production is going on in these buildings. And it's very often used as metaphor uh, in uh, Western Europe and US that when people work separately, then they say they work in silos. So it means that, that each of each of the disciplines, let's say this is architecture, this is uh, structural engineering, this is MEP, they work their own little worlds, there are no windows of these silos, so they don't talk to each other, they just talk among themselves. And there's very little interaction going on between these, these different silos. So we believe this is the biggest problem of the collaboration, because collaboration works more or less okay within a certain discipline, within our, between architects or between structural engineers or between MEP engineers. But between the, those disciplines, the collaboration is very weak. And this is what we must change. And this is what we at Graphisoft are determined to change. The way we want to change this, this is long, uh, 
we have decided is an open industry, an open deal that we want to establish. So we don't want to uh, create a closed world and like only those who has, have hard care or only those who are our customers can benefit, but we want to create a, a platform that is open to everybody. And of course, there are periods of different file formats what we can talk about, and each of them is valid. But maybe two of out of this, IFC and PCA, PCF, is the most critical ones. But openly encompasses everything. It's not just about IFC, it's not just about a certain file format, but it's a way, it's a, it's a uh, philosophy how to work together. And this is deeply embedded in Graphisoft, and I dare to say that a lot of customers are very skillfully already using this. So here is an actual opening setup, for instance. This is uh, our customer in Japan, uh, Nikken Senke, uh, the quite famous uh, architectural design company also operating in China. You can see that, the, yes, Arnigan is in the center as the main deep authoring tool, but there are tons of applications, oh, sorry, tons of applications around connecting to each other different, through different file formats. Some of them are IFC, some of them are not, some of them are direct link, some of them are custom made by a company in the red ones, some of them are industry standards. So basically, of course, this is a big company, but every, every company should have a rolling like this, should have a plan like this. What is your open big plan? How do you work with those applications together? Because we cannot just use one application, we have to use many tools, as, as there are many different disciplines. Uh, by the way, uh, OpenBIM is, is a movement, a movement uh, also prominent in the public smart organization and is showing how important this OpenBIM standard is becoming in China. You can see that, that the next International Standard Summit meeting uh, of the building smart is going to take place in Beijing very soon in October. So I hope to see you, many of you. Uh, there, because this is an important step for Chinese industry to uh, more deeply and advance open deep in the uh, Chinese construction industry. I would like to talk a few words about our parent company, Nemechek, which is a German company. So, while Rafsov is from Hungary, the parent company uh, is, is from Germany. As you can see, collaboration and open BIM is also a keyword for the whole group, whole Nemechek group. And this is where we see with Nemechek uh, where the key for the future is. So we are putting together a very significant and strong portfolio of softwares. Nemechek is quite active in acquisitions of different softwares. And as you can see, these companies now uh, marked in green are the most critical for this building of the uh, open beam based in platform for the future. I will talk a little bit more about this in the later phase. Okay. Now I would like to show one interesting data which you may not be aware that Nemechek is not so much known uh, in China and in Asia, but in fact for two years they are the second biggest uh, construction related software group in the world. And it's pretty surprising that only Autos is bigger than us and, and the software part, of course not the whole company, but the software part is bigger than let's say Bentley or Oracle in terms of, of revenue and market capitalization. So this is a very important position. We are the challengers and obviously as a challenger we don't want to stop with the second but we want to grow and eventually we are aiming to have a number one position. Here's another interesting data about the stock market. So of course, stock market is you know going up and down, and everybody knows that, that uh, this is not a day-to-day -day -day representation of what's going on. But in the longer term, stock market trends are definitely meaning something. And this is a quite long term, it's a three and a half year term graph, showing that out of all the architectural construction software companies which are on the stock market, far ahead is Nemechek in terms of appreciation. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we have exactly 
transfer or anything like that. It means that more customers trust us and, and the two test stores believe that we will grow. And I think they are right because we are growing and we are continuing on. We are determined to continue to grow. There are some news also from our company. Some of you uh, already met a few times this guy called Victor Varkoni, who has been our president and the CEO in the last 10 years. And he was driving the company to become three times as big during his leadership. Now he left us, but he didn't leave us in it because he went higher. He became an amateur uh, officer and his area will encompass all the design softwares in Nemechek, such as Solibri or Bluebeam or, or, or some others. So he's going to be continuing to be with us. Instead of him, our new CEO is Mr. Hugh Roberts. Uh, he's from the US, America. Uh, and he, has been, he is an architect, but he has been with Bentley, Bentley Software for many years, uh, marketing specialist and marketing VP eventually. Now he has moved to Budapest and he is leading us for the next, uh, hopefully many years, for uh, further growth. I'm quite sure that Mr. Roberts will visit China very soon, and I hopefully some of you will be able to meet him. He's very, very uh, strong believer that uh, at Asia, and especially in the nature of course, China is the place where we have to be progress of up to the next level. And uh, one more reminder about Asia, because uh, this is my responsibility to grow the Asia market. So currently in Asia, we are present in three countries uh, as Graphisoft in China, in Singapore, and in Hong Kong, uh, with China and, and Japan is the third one. So out of this, Japan is far the longest established, so both are currently the uh, almost three-third, three-fourth of the revenues coming from Japan. But my job is to change that. It's obviously, it's not a natural state that, that China is doing less than Japan. So I hope with your help and with my colleagues' help, next year I come either to <coughs> more China, and not, not by reducing Japan, of course, but, but by growing Japan parallelly. So I hope that, that uh, this, this uh, China keeps going and occupying a bigger, bigger piece of this pie. Uh, Singapore, I must say that that is doing pretty well because it's a small country, but, but I think in this pie chart their position is, is quite good. So uh, and Singapore is very important because this is the sort of economical capital of Southeast Asia. So I'm quite sure that, that the success of Singapore will be followed by other Asian countries. So in the next, last part of my presentation, I would like to talk a few more a few, uh, teasers about the upcoming presentation, product presentation, what are we going to talk about? Basically about three things, about modeling, coordination and proactivity again. So regarding modeling, of course graphics of R can model practically everything. But the question is that how easily, how quickly you can model this? Are we really enabling you to model all these three talents and means in this case because this is the focus now? Then my answer is not so certain, so in some cases I would scratch my head and say, yeah, we can do this, but it's, 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 you have to do this and this and this and this and this, and it, it's sometimes it's not very easy. Now we are focusing uh, on, on these two tools, the color and the beam tools, which are the most essential in architecture, and maybe in China and Asia it's even more important than in Europe. And you can see that, that we are making these things very easy. This is going to be one of our presentations. Second, coordination. So coordination, uh, of course, of course, between many disciplines. This time, our, our focus is on MEP and architecture. So how the different types of different types of pipes and, and other equipment interacts with the building itself. And it's interesting to say that the interaction is is a very simple very almost insignificant place when it takes place, the opening, a hole, a nothing, an emptiness. This is where it interacts, because if a pipe comes into a wall, it needs a hole, of course. So that sounds very simple, but actually it's not, and hopefully I will be able to uh, convince you, uh, or my colleagues will be able to convince you, that actually this tiny hole has very interesting features, and then will do a lot for you. 
So this is going to be our uh, second point. Productivity itself, of course, this is a bigger issue. And basically there are two types, two ways you can grow productivity. You can do it, do things faster. Maybe not as fast as a Ferrari, but, but sometimes yes. But sometimes you can do things smarter, meaning that achieve the same goal in different way. Apple is a good example of that, which makes everything simple. So we have to do both. We have to make things simple faster and perform the software faster. You will see some examples. But in some cases, we will just give you a different way to do things, which maybe just simpler. And, and that's why faster, and that's why not higher productivity. So this is not one big feature, but kind of medley of, of all the different things. And I think uh, existing users who are already using Nordic and will enjoy smarter image. The last one, this red one, is a surprise. So I'm not really going to talk about it, but it will be fun. And this will be also presented at the end of the day. This will be probably one of the last few things. And maybe one word about what, what is beyond this version, because of course we do every year version, but, but already now we are thinking about the next. And if you are kind of so kind to come over here to, to play with us, then maybe I should give a hint at what's coming later on, or maybe not even so late. So uh, this is the world highest mountain, the Mount Everest, or as you call it, John Lumma. And we started a project called the Everest Project. Uh, it's not only a graphics of project, but we do uh, together with our colleagues in Namecheck, with Alpma, Irufus, Solibri and others. So it's a joint Namecheck project. And it basically, what it means is to create a platform. So Oregon is a sort of platform now, but, but we think we need more. So on one hand, what we need is, is more disciplines. So we are going into more structural engineering, eventually also MEP. And you can see more wider coverage from Graphisoft in the future from Articad. Uh, the second direction is that the, the Big Cloud, which is our strength, I think Big Cloud is a robust technology that, that really offers the possibility to share work between architects very well. Now we will open this up and open this up to other disciplines on one hand, uh, what you can see here, but also open up to other softwares and open. We are in a true open big spirit. Uh, everybody is welcome there. Uh, everybody is, will have a possibility to place data there. And this data can be uh, used as a reference or can be checked by Solibri or reviewed by Ruby or viewed by, by Linux. So it will be a true open platform uh, which, based on IRC, one can, one can uh, manipulate the data uh, in a free and easy way. And maybe one more aspect of this uh, thing, what we are thinking, that how we share data. And now, let me uh, go back, like 10 years ago, we shared data as a file. I gave you a file, you opened it, and you did something, and you gave back the file. Later on, with Teamwork first, we, we went into the element level sharing. So we didn't have to share the whole file, but we said, okay, here is this column. You, you may want to change it. Go ahead, or he lives this wall, do something about it. And, and then teamwork, this is how teamwork uh, worked. That you can share elements to each other and decide, okay, this is, these elements belong to you, you can manipulate it, but let me do my elements. And then, of course, you couldn't change it. But we realize this is not enough, you have to go deeper. Because let's take a column, for instance, in this example. Uh, who does a column belong to? Is it an architect? You can manipulate the column? Yes, but, but not only the architect, the structure engineer uh, also has something to do about it because he wants to decide how big the column is. But the architect wants to decide what is the surface of the column, what's the color of the column, what is the material of the surface. So why don't we divide on a parameter level? And we can say that, okay, I'm the architect, I can decide what is on the surface, but I have no right to decide what it, how big is it because I have no idea. That's something that the art structure engineer knows only. So this is what we are going to establish. A parameter, parameter level of uh, sharing, a parameter level of collaboration, which we believe will again revolutionize the industry in the sense how element level sharing with teamwork 50 to 10 years ago revolutionized. 
So this is what I wanted to share with you, a little bit uh, pick your attention up and hopefully you will enjoy the presentation of my colleagues even more after that. Thank you very much.